very successful on this in day one. You're working with a support clockwork. How's EG going to play the lanes? We're already having a little bit of a glimpse into the laning maneuver, and I was wondering if they're going to try and match up the Darkseer versus the Tidehunter. Uh, instead, it actually looks like the Darkseer is going to head north with the Bane. They don't need the Darkseer versus Tide. I think Razor is one of the best uh, safe lane carries versus a Tidehunter. You have a ton of plus damage to break through the Kraken, and you're a ranged hero. Mm -hmm. Kaka. Position for Clockwork is mighty popular. Very good at interrupting a Bane, trapping a clock, uh, trapping a Darkseer, uh, making some room for your OD. It's that big sacrificial initiation as well. Like you can you can jump him in. You don't care if he lose him. If he splits up the fight with EG, then that's kind of all you need. And EG you need to really keep everyone together. You want that back into boat. You then have to rely on the individual control coming out from the Bane for the big problematic heroes and give Templar, Assassin, and Razor the space to do what they need to do. Oh, yeah, I think they could do a lot more with Razor. Razor, what, died twice, I would say, early last game? Gave up first blood, didn't get into Bounty Rune. There were a lot of things that weren't going well for him. This time, he's in a safe lane. He might get the Bounty Rune this time, but at least he won't die from this. Okay, as I say that. <laughs> yeah, okay, Pete. A lot of damage can be stolen, but there's not a lot of RTs he can do with it. It's just a simple walk off for the Tide Hunter. But it is a one on one. We see the Kuga head at top mm -hmm. with a Darkseer and with a Bane. So it is going to be a try on try at the start, but I wonder how long that's going to last. Yeah. Like Kaka comes forward, he wants to change up the creep, so at least he pushes the range back. He can just burn all their mana with Cogs. Well, there goes the Sentry Ward down. They'll give you the Vision Frostbite in with a spin. It's the old classic combination. The Nightmare bouncing around. Universe is low, still on the run. The Iron Shell damage is actually dropping down Karka. He will be very low. The last attack from Bane will be able to get a revenge. But First Blood, it goes the way of Newbie. But we're not done just yet. Moogie on the run. Zai looking for more damage. Crit's going to deliver it, however. The secondary Brain Sap. And they, losing the Juggernaut, losing your safe laner, and that was definitely not the plan from Newbie. They took so much damage from that Ion Shell chasing that far. And these melee heroes, yeah, you have a spin to deal with it, but that's once in a while. This bottom lane, I'm not certain how it's meant to work for KP. This makes more sense when Kaka is going to rotate over. Leaves the Observe Ward behind, understands that Arteezy is very much alone. And if they can keep him close on top of the tower, that's one way to work it. So the battery assault begins. You do not have the cogs just yet. So KP. Okay, no gush, nothing like that. So they just let it go. I think the game plan is going to be or similar. Mid for it's vision. perfect. SC, someone stop that curry before it dies as well. But the torrent hits perfectly. An easy combination. Simple nightmare into torrent and then let Samael do the damage. Even though crit does take the kill. He's racked up all three of EG's kills, in fact. Early game going similar to the last game, but I think this time it's a little bit different in that they can actually leave their other cores alone. I think that's one of the big benefits of Razor is that he is very self-sufficient in the lane. It doesn't need a lot of babysitting like Spectre or Luna, some of these other heroes that we expect in the safe lane. And it's not Razor being forced into this aggro tri lane where you need to find kills. Like you're letting the Dark Sea or Iron Shell do most of that work. But his CS is not that great. He only has eight CS relative to the six of the Tide Hunter, so surprisingly he's not edging him out too much in that bottom lane. And it's like he's just trying to focus on zoning out KP, but it hasn't functioned. SC wants to have his little bit of an opportunity, so the imprisonment allows Faith plus Kaka just to roam in and then attack on that mid lane. Samel wants to run, but the Cogs will hold him there. The battery assault, the damage keeps coming, and there's no way for Samel to survive. This is almost very reminiscent of that old dual off lane you used to do, the SD as well as the Clockwork. In this case, it's the imprisonment from Astral as opposed to the Shadow Demons. What a stat. Shout out to Knoxville. 20 gold fed. It's not Knox, it's production. That's, that's <laughs> Pimp and the boys who create that stuff. We can still blame Knox. Let me just find my Twitter. All right, so... Laning is still looking fairly decent for EG. Their CS is still looking good even though the Overall, like 180 gold the difference early on. We're only three minutes in. 
But there's a lot of movement coming down to that bottom lane. It looks like they're trying to actually have a crack. And in fact, they will. It's over towards KP. A quick plasma feel for the rotation towards the mid. It's for revenge. You want to attack the offlane. You want to bring down Tidehunter. You're going to actually slow down the momentum hero of EG. You're slowing down the Templar Assassin with kill after kill. Trying to reduce her net worth, which is now below that of the OD. Not by much, but it is below. Yeah, the OD doesn't fared that well in the straight one-on-one -on -one matchup, but it is great setup for a cog. It's hard to make position for clockwork work, but with the four-second just walk on top of them set up for a perfect cogs, and generally you kill all the creeps with the astral imprisonment, it makes it much easier for clockwork spells to take effect. Invisibility. Start to beg the question then, like, how do you stop this? Like, Templar Assassin, do you just send her into farming up stacks in the jungle? And it's let, let, the the, plan. let the Bane try and hold the mid so if he dies from the combination, at least you don't lose as much, but you get your Fiend Strip earlier. They can just kill the side lanes, that's what they've been doing. Just run around with the Bane and the Kuka, an old school combo. But now they've actually split up their supports. It is, as you mentioned, the Bane sitting in the mid to make sure that Sumail doesn't die again, but their combination is way oh, more they found the universe. Off. Battery Assault, Frostbite, can't surge away from that, especially when he locked inside the cogs. Really great, great movement from Nubi. Finding the openings, had the vision as well to let them know when Darkseer was just backing off to get the easy farm. I like the super active play from Faith. He has been involved in a lot of kills and has not been farming those neutrals and playing the Crystal Maiden very well as a position five. Well, it's Faith. what he couldn't do in game one. It's where they were always locked because this aggressive tri lane of EG had to stand on the lane. This is what they wanted to do in game one. Yeah, and it, I also think the Arcane R really enables a clockwork, so he can just run around and get kills. You don't want to have to keep running back and forth as a clock. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal for him. Oh, EG. Need to try and find that nice control. <laughs> Kaka. All right, well, that's one way. It's a zone outside. He's trying to figure out what the, what the TA is up to. Just need to make sure that she doesn't get a free stack off at all, if at all possible. They can use the Tidehunter, by far the best ultimate, I think, in this game, to bully that around. Well, they committed their wards to actually watch for the stack. So the extra ward up on top of the Radiant Ancients. They could have looked in towards the jungle for, of Radiant instead, like a little bit further to the south. But they're focusing instead on the northern side of the map. Makes it a lot more riskier for Darks here to move anywhere as well. Well, Omni Slash, crit isolated, goes in for the spin. So Omni Slash, all of them hit before that nightmare could really try and negate some of the damage out from Moggy. And the Frostbite to interrupt the cast on the brain so Small play. Battery Assault, RTZ, the Cogs hold him there. KP doesn't have the ult yet, she has to cut through the Cogs to get close enough to Arteezy to do some level of damage. The Clockwork Rocket, Arteezy, so low, wants to heal up, but it's KP who will end up dying. The damage deal begins. Can they get the Nightmare at least? Hold Kaka in position, no, the Bane can't reach him, but Arteezy with 112 stolen damage and the Plasma Field finds the kill and punishes the newbie off lane. Wow, well, very surprised he was able to survive there. Tidehunter really hurting on those levels. He even picked an early one point in Gush so they could go for the kill. But it's just not as clean of a setup as the mid laner. Might have been a very different story if he had more time to reach like the level six. That would have been the final bit of damage and control to bring down Arteezy. And already we see some ancient stacks coming out from EG as they try and buff up Sumail. And Big difference from last game, right? Last game, the pressure was on EG to make the move, but this game, I think it's the pressure's on Newbie to get more done, more work done because EG's going to be the team stacking and farming Ancients. Can Newbie actually contest it? Like, when TA backs off to go and farm it up? Can I think Clockwork can be six. There, then you could hook shot in and then create issues. Yeah, or else I, I think you're just going to be wasting a lot of time. Like, she could just back away. And I, I suppose Tidehunter can think about stealing them, but... Intimidation with Ravage may just be enough. Yeah, but you can't just sit there. They can yeah. just scout you out with a trap and uh, just back off. So I think they need to actually be able to take it themselves, but that's not going to happen until Titan hits like maybe level eight because he doesn't have the max points of Kraken Shield right now to tank up the Ancient Faith. Yeah, they blocked it up uh, with the Observer Ward, so they yeah. want to limit this economic game because TA has not shown in lane for a few minutes now. But OD now on top of the CS with much more valuable CS in the... Mid creeps, not the neutrals. There is more opportunity cost for going to the jungle nowadays. And his net worth is about 500 in front of the TA. 
Chris still hoping for his own opportunity in the mid. Not but even close to six, though. Oh, but he hits five at least. And they're giving him the space, so when Templar Assassin takes this jungle, and Zai, mass defense to try and force this top lane. He knows Omni Slash is available and does not want to risk it. Mookie oh. can cause a lot of issues, but okay, well, Kaka could do the same. Running in close, but again, still no level six on the clockwork, so they don't have anything which really allows them to reduce the distance quickly. I definitely need that before they can start making plays. Titan, there's still no Ravage skills up yet. He's hurt. That's the level six. Yeah, just hasn't skilled it up. Maybe thinking that he can just farm with the neutrals and farm with the ancients without really fighting right now. But Arteezy's very large. Level nine already. It's pretty yeah. crazy amounts of farm. It seems like we're actually going to have a Razor, which is effective. A lot more effective. Able to tank up, able to play a great position, going for that early four stuff. They yeah. really need 4 7 this guy right here. Midas coming out, just what, 18 gold right now? But it's going to be a while before they can actually fight the Razor head on. He is likely going to steal a lot of damage, and I don't think he's going to be able to reverse it down. No Sandy's Eclipse, not even max level on the Arcane Orb on the OD, which would be their main tool to take him down. Is it worthwhile getting an earlier BKB on the Razor, or is it worthwhile actually finishing up things like Hurricane Pike? I'm, a, I'm thinking mainly because the BKB is going to be perfect against like OD as well as Tidehunter. I think you're okay with getting Astral. The thing about Astraling the Razor is you get unstable current in, and he still is able to suck a lot of damage, and you still have to run away as the OD. You can't just like, you can't just Astral him and then keep right clicking people. You still have to back off during the fight, so it's kind of not exactly the same, but it's kind of uh, even similar to Astraling yourself because you still have to back off the fight. You're still useless for those few seconds that you disable them. Whereas Razor, he still has an eye of the storm ticking and he still gets damage off with unstable current. So it's, it's not even the most effective thing for him. And you don't really care that much if you get Ravid. I see he's more so worried about getting uh, getting person down with the Omni Slash. But that's why they have both. Oh, trying to go for the denial on the tower might pay with his life, but Zai? That's being searched away, crits and they put as well, so three heroes ready to fight, but crit doesn't actually have level six. But X mark spot, pull him back in, but spin. Wait for it, it's gonna last way too long, but that movement speed, Samael on haste, running underneath the tier one tower. No, 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 no. Is he actually gonna try and duke it out in the tree lines? The torrent's kicking in, it'll be able to connect to Zyne. Finds the kill on the Juggernaut, as Samael couldn't finish the deal. I like those sort of plays. Hulk Shot is up. They go in. It's right on top of Universe. Underneath the T1 tower. The orb attacked him from SC. Bring all the damage required to find the kill. The battery assault making it almost impossible for Darkseer uh, just to run away. It's so important for them that the clockwork is level 6 because he's their main player right now. I think Tidehunter's still trying to recover. KP does like his farm on the offlaner. He, sometimes he builds pipe, but I think more so he's been building uh, a little bit more farm oriented on his off laners. He's actually not revealing it too. There's nothing in the quick buy. We don't know if it will be if it will be the pipe, uh, if it will be a mech, if it will be a blink tanker. Even an early four step might be good mm -hmm. against the razor and against the uh, against the TA. It might not be the worst thing for him to go for. He may need the blink tanker, however, just so we can make sure he gets in range of the bane if that uh, if that fiend script comes off. That's true. He doesn't usually go for the blink first, however. He likes, like, the regeneration, for, especially from the new 4 stuff, makes a lot of sense for the Tide Hunter. Yeah. I think Mech or Hood is more likely. Mm. But, I mean, Midas right now, they're like, there's not really too much fighting. So. If, if it was going to go for the Mech, you could at least pick up, like, like some of the armor, like, some of the regeneration that comes from, from it. It's You run the risk of what happened to EG last game, and that they just don't take fights if you go for team fighting items. So I think he's trying to balance that risk reward for his farming items right now. Is he going to get punished if he goes for a Midas? Oh, Fiend script. Well, that is not real. That is a fake. You have fallen for the oldest trick in the book. It was an illusion, and now Arteezy might get caught out. The battery assault, Kaka staying hot on the heels, or in this case, the coattails. Needs a hook shot forward to catch up to Arteezy. Able to do so. Faith and KP still on the way, but that four staff's up. A quick nightmare. The frost will slow down Zai, letting the ship go. This stun may just be enough space creation for him to get out to safety. KP, well, they have the damage. The torrent won't be able to connect. The rocket flies forward, and it will just be an anchor smash from KP. But you get a conquer. What they really wanted, it was the Razor, and they did not get it. 
and Razor went for a four staff first. It saved them in that instance, and it is very useful versus the Clockwork, but they are lacking a lot in damage. Spin TP time. Just creep skipping out a lot of damage into the tier two tower, and Juggernaut knows he cannot be stopped. Not with the grip on the illusion. Mm -hmm. So similar build to last game from him, just with the four step added in between. Yeah, best against the clockwork, I would say, but still pretty good chasing down OD. I'll take that as fact. Kark is still hovering around the mid. Ten seconds till that hook shots back off cooldown. We still haven't seen that KP Ravage. He hasn't had a good opportunity yet because he hasn't had the good positioning for it. He's trying to farm his mech. He's realizing that they're fighting a lot. Well, by taking the Ancients, that'll work. Also doing it before the Templar or Assassin can get there with the Tier 1 tower lost on the top lane. They have to start cleaning up these stacks. I think the armor is very useful versus the Razor and the TA. Kaka. X marks the spot. Zion wants to drag him back over. Able to do so with the boat and the brain sap. The damage is enough and Kaka will fall. Support is still there from Nubi. They brought everybody down to fight this one apart from the Tidehunter. They kept him farming up the Ancients throughout this. But Kuka X from the other side of the river. So Nubi know they have a ward somewhere, but they just can't find it. It's on the far southeast side, and that's pretty hard for them to ward. That's way outside of the normal area. Xing again. Samael's not jumping in for this. And you can you can see Faith wanting to do so. He, he thinks it's up near the like the EG flag on their side of the river. Now Mech is almost complete. They just need to wait for it on the chicken, and I think they can take a fight with this. However, now they only have a reserve ward on the south. Ancients. Actually, they're not even going to wait for the mech. Yeah, he has the money. They're smoking around. Coming in is the Dire Observer. Well, they're seeing it. currently the rooted up Samael Sarkaka. Hookshot's ready. It's the easiest hookshot ever as well. They jump in. They hold him inside the cogs and quickly into the Omni side. But the ship is on the way. But Newbie, they know they're good with no Templar Assassin. There's no burst damage. And KP lets the Ravage go. Universe not affected by it. He'll have to surge away Zai. So Ravage is blown, they don't find the opportunity they really wanted, but the tier one tower is already under siege, and Nubi can just finish the job. And doing a good job of controlling the Ancients and taking the fight in the right place. A little bit unfortunate with a root creep there. That slow T, like maybe if it were a different set of creeps, he would have killed it before they would have come. Oh, that's easy. The forgotten hero almost, but Kaka hasn't forgotten him, gets in front, gets the cogs off, a quick four staff, gets him outside the cogs, even though the mana will be low, hook shot still not available for the moment for Kaka. 20 seconds on cooldown, that movement speed from Razor with phase boots, way too fast. Unless this happens, he's got cogs again. If he wants to hold him there, supports rotating over, Faith lets the Nova go. Maybe if they had an Omni, they could pursue right there, but their catch is terrible. Like, they also need, like, Freezing Field. Like, then, the, then Faith might have had enough damage to get the kill onto the Razor. Yeah, so they still need to buy some time. Their movements are very inefficient right now because they can't capitalize on anyone after the hookshot is down. Mm -hmm. But they still have their T1 up. And, uh, Newbie have done a fantastic job of taking down the opponent's T1, pressing their Ancients while keeping up their objectives in their own mid lane. And I think the T1 tower is especially important in this game because of the threat of the Roshan from TA. It's EG on the hunt again, but again they walk underneath the OBS and Sentry. All this movement from EG is just being watched by Newbie. So no ability to surprise this Newbie line. So they just back up, go back into their farm. The only person they leave in almost a slightly exposed position is Tidehunter. And he's back up almost to his own tier 2 tower in the bottom, just continuously farming up the neutrals. And getting closer and closer towards that blink dagger with his mech. And then the rocket flies right over the top of crit. Don't know if it actually saw him, because it was just a little bit further north, but with the tier 1 tower being attacked and Newbie being aware of this, they go inside of Roshan. Now the Templar Assassin traps it down. So EG are fully aware of what's going on as the trap is, is getting dewatered out with the Sentry Ward there. TP's coming over into the Shrine. They have to be ready to fight this one. Ravage, it's still not up for the Tide Hunter. He's got five seconds before that's there as Arteezy needs a moment. It's not Melini, relax. <laughs> that's really strange that they didn't really use the uh, Gush onto the Roshan. I think both of the Gushes were blocked by the Lincolns. So it could have potentially been at like maybe 10% less right now. And they maybe could have taken it for free. 
uh, if they were or able to coordinate like the frostbite, but it's not really low enough for Newbie to just take it right now. All right, I think we're they ready all to have go. To get out of the pit. Back into the game as Roshan is being killed off. Here comes your torrent. Where's the extra follow up, however? Kaka just playing sentry wards. He wants to put down the cogs and keep EG out the front of the pit line if it's possible. KP does have that ravage back up and available now. A quick couple of orbs. SE already stealing up that intel. Now comes the ship with the torrent, combining with the back wall. It hits on both faith as well as KP, but minimal effectiveness at the moment. Arteezy waiting for the right opportunity. KP lets the ulti go with the spin combination and the hammer drop from the OG. EG, please lose so much life so quickly. SC is a triple kill. Crit's on the run. He'll be imprisoned up. That may be enough effect that just watching him die. Four heroes go the way of SC. Roshan as well. Doobie, it's like they wanted EG to come. And the welcome mat, the red carpet was there. It was white to start with. God, Newbie's playing around KP so well. I think in this entire tournament, they've just been fantastic at identifying his vision. Like, look how far forward he is in the team fight. He comes outside of the pit and threatens with a rabbit, and they're all forced to back away from him. And if they come too close, they get they get three man rabbit. If they leave it, then they just get they just. Uh, Roshan just gets taken for free. So right at this moment, right after the vacuum boat, he runs to the left side and they're like, oh god, he's coming, he's coming. What are we supposed to do now? Split, 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 trying to get hit by the Ravage. And then they all group up, get hit by the spin. And because SC was able to have a little bit of chip harassment beforehand, that Eclipse actually did even more work for Newbie. Yeah, that Sandy's Eclipse hurt them so badly, having to group up into that choke. Yep. And that's the danger zone, right? Like, and how do you deal with that when you're EG? You don't have your BKBs up yet. You're not ready to fight because you went for these four staffs. The BKB is obviously now on the list for Arteezy and the Templar Assassin. She needs to finish her Desolator first before picking up the BKB. So Mail still needs the high damage. They need a bigger Wombo with a vacuum into the boat. That was just vacuum boat into... Uh, well, that's when you initiate. It's like that's when you meant, meant to put Arteezy on the front lines, right? Like, you got all this farm. He's meant to be our tank through this. Ideally, but no one wants to get Omni Slash and Ravaged. You're not going to survive from that. And Razor's life is not low enough to the point where he can just tank it. Very simple kill. SC. They're feeding him more and more now. Six one three onto that OD, taking five of his kills in just the last minute. The early movements by Kaga have just set SEC up for complete dominance. And look at his game. positional play, he actually just buys a blink dagger. So now he can be the initiator with the, with the imprisonment. KP, very patiently waiting in the tree lines as they flank around the back. EG being pinched now by Newbie Arteezy. Four staff out, Universe trying to surge him away. The puzzle field kicks out, but nowhere near enough damage to dissuade him, to dissuade Newbie from killing him. Up in the four staff saving a couple times, but as you mentioned before, he needs BKB. Yep. But now it's too late. They've lost so many fights. Like, do you really want to go for BKB? I still think they'll lose the fights even if they go for BKB. Well, you don't really have a choice because you can't take the fights without it. You have a or choice. else you live in fear of the Ravage the entire time. The amount of damage the ODs can be throwing at you. Juggernaut I, is hitting a point where the physical damage is going to rip through you. I don't disagree. But if you don't live, you can't win the fight. I think you can go for the route of trying to farm out faster than they can kill you, though. I think uh, mm. maybe if like BKB was completely safe in the BKB TP and the side lane pushes, then maybe, but... I can imagine TA going for a build like that for the quick pops, but can you really allow Arteezy to do such a thing? Like last time he went for the Shivas, he went for the Assault Gyrus. These are still very expensive items to get to. And he's losing a lot of his map to farm. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually not sure how he tanks with this. Normally your Razor just so big and beefy to the point where you can just run in and... Not give a damn, but this game, he, if he runs in, he just gets ulted even once, I would say he would die. Newbie, commanding positioning game two. They're already one game up in the series. And if they can win this one, you go straight through into the grand final, get yourself a day off, while the other teams have to work hard to fight it out. Must be nice. Yeah. Go and enjoy the wonderful sights that is Manila. Man, I think you've been blessed with this series. So if you got Enigma in the first game, you had a WoW moment in the second game. This game, we also have a TA on the Radiant side. And you know what other refraction moment there was? There was a refraction near the T2. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I'm just... 
It's like, it's like you're begging for memes. Arteezy, he's begging for death on your knees. Execution. Like a Game of Thrones character, he continues to be deleted. And the fact the three-man wall, maybe Universe can create a glorious fight for the Frostbite Templar has to control the ship. It needs to create some space, but Surreal SC, he is just so damn strong. On Dragon's Wings, he pushes forward a triple kill for this OD. He is devouring evil geniuses. One by one, they fall. Yeah, a much different set of last game. SEC got dominated in the lane last game, but yeah, this game with that just a little bit of oh, help. He's, he's, he's just going in, blink oh, forward, why God. not? You got the power. He still got 80 stolen intelligence. No wonder he, no wonder he can three hit down heroes. And Newbie want to try and end this. 24 minutes in, Newbie will push into high ground for the first time. And then he's back out there, KP with the Ravage, able to isolate at least crit. So he is now down, buybacks available. And EG, they need a fight. They need to win this one. No Ravage is up. They know there's no Eclipse. Newbie don't have their big team fights. EG, they have to do something, and they have to do it now. But who do they do it on? Hookshot forward from Tarka. The Nightmare tries for a little bit of space, but now it's going to be the dieback from Crit. The boat is nice. It's a good combination, but where is that damage? Arteezy trying to desperately steal it from the spinning up. Juggernaut. But those orbs, they just keep going and going and going. The damage, SC, you can't repel intel of this magnitude. He is just too big. Faith also, more control for him. This game, it looks like it's over. EG are being found, killed, and it is not even 25 minutes. And Nubi have 2-0 their